Well, how's everybody this morning? You glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Anybody in here cold this morning? Praise the Lord, I hope not. That's one thing we can count on in here, amen? It's going to be cool in the summertime and it's going to be warm in the wintertime, amen? Amen. Imagine all the folks that paid to go see the ball games out yesterday in that zero degree weather. Wonder how many people we get to attend church in zero degree weather outside. I'm talking about for free. I didn't say we charge, I said for free. That, that tells where men's hearts are today, amen? If you will this morning, go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Just want to talk to you a little bit this morning about who the Lord is. Amen? Amen. You do know that He loves you, right? No matter whether you're at the top of the hill like Miss Gail, or whether you're at the bottom of the ladder like I am, He he loves us all. Amen? It don't matter about age. It don't matter about anything. The Lord, it It don't matter how good you are. It don't matter how bad you are. The Lord loves you. Amen? You know, once upon a time, I thought, I'm going to get myself right one of these days, and I'm going to get born again, and I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen? See, at that time, I didn't think the Lord loved me. You know why? Because I wasn't good enough. I hadn't done enough. Amen? And then one day I found out, one day I found out, that it's, it's not a way that I can earn it. It's not a way that you can earn it. There's not a way you can pay for it or buy it. Amen? The Lord said, it's a gift. Right? Jesus Christ was a gift to us. Right? How special is He? I was th- we're going we're to get into this in a minute, but I was thinking about this the other day as the Lord gave me this message. But, you know, everybody talks about stuff. Automatically when something happens, somebody wins big or this happens, or, or if you had one wish, what would it be? And, and everybody's talking about stuff. Amen? You know what? A nice car, a new car, it'll make you happy for a few days. Maybe even a few months. Amen? But after those payments keep rolling in and keep rolling in and keep rolling in, seemed about like one every week, it it, it don't become all that nice anymore, does it? It it starts becoming a burden to you. It starts becoming a hindrance to you, right? Amen? All kinds of things like that. They're nice. But what about Jesus? What about Jesus? He paid the ultimate price. You know, we look at automobiles today, and we see you buy a truck today, and it's $80,000 for, for a truck. For a truck. I didn't pay that much for my house, folks. And it's got two bathrooms in it. You can't even pee in a truck. Amen? Pay $80,000 for something you got to pull over and run in the woods to. Right? Anybody today, you'd pay $80,000 for a home and have to go outside and use the bathroom. Nobody. You see what I'm saying? Not, and I'm not knocking stuff. I'm just saying our priorities are all turned around and screwed up. Right? But it's because of the world that we live in. It's because of what we've been dealing with, what we've been seeing every day. Amen? We, we letting all the people that are around us, everybody that has all this stuff, we letting them affect our lives instead of, letting, instead of us affecting their lives. Amen? Right? You know what? The people in Africa don't know how poor they are. You know why? Because they don't know how much stuff that they could have. Right? Me and you, don't, we don't know how much we don't have until we see somebody else that's got it. Right? Amen? What if everybody rode around in an old car? What if everybody just rode around in junk? 
How many people do you think would want a new one? If they constantly seen everybody else riding around in one. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's all about what we see. It's all about what we're putting on the inside. Amen? And once again, I'm not against stuff. I like stuff. Stuff's good. But we need to keep stuff in its place. Amen? How often do we cherish, cherish Jesus like that? Amen? How special is He to us? Right? I'm going to touch this one more time and then I'm going to move on. As I said, I watched some football games yesterday and it was cold. Amen? One of the games, it was six degrees. And the place was packed. There was snow on the ground and snow in the bleachers. And the place was packed. Amen? wonder how many people we'd get to go to church if we had church outside this morning. It was 26 degrees at my house this morning. Wonder how many people would have showed up. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm, not, I'm just asking the question. How many people would have showed up to set out in 26 degree weather this morning to hear the word? Not many. You know what? I can't say I'd be there. And that's a shame. Amen? I, I would like to tell you I would be there. And we can all say we'd be there. But you don't know what you'd do. You'd like to think you know what you'd do, but you don't know what you'd do. Amen? Amen? I can tell you this. You won't see me at a football game at six degrees. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Right? If, if, that's your, if that's your wagon, that's up to you, but you won't see me there. Right? Amen? His name is Jesus. Right? His name is Jesus, and there's only one way. There's only one way He's going to become number one to us. And that's if we make Him number one. That's right. Amen? He's not going to become number one to me just because He's number one to you. That's right? True. Folks, we need to start letting the world see something different. Right? We need, we need to let the world see something different than focusing on stuff and on things. Right? Amen? We need to let people see us loving Jesus. Right? You know, what, you know what does my heart good? When I see a family walking around together. And I can tell they love one another. Amen. That's what means something to me. Amen? To see a, 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 a mama and a, and a child and a child not respecting them. That, that don't do my heart good. Amen? We got a breakdown somewhere. Right? Let's hold on to what this Word says. Let's have what this Word says we can have. Amen? Amen? Let's show this world. Amen? Now, I remember when me and my wife first got, before we got married, we, we went to a counseling class, a marriage counseling class. Amen? And the counselor said, first and foremost... You need to let, we, we Tina already had a child <clears throat> from a previous marriage. He said, first and foremost, you need to let that child know that you love them both. Amen? You love on both of them. People today are afraid to love on one another. That's right. Amen? We sitting in the restaurant, it, don't, it ain't nothing mean to lean over and give my wife a kiss. I love her. Amen? Now, I didn't say we make out at the table. That ain't right neither. But it's all right to show affection. Amen? 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 It's all right for us to show affection to the Lord. It's all right for us to be passionate toward the Lord. Everybody in here, you believe something, don't you? Well, let's be passionate about it. Right? Let's be passionate about what we believe. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not saying we're not doing that. I'm saying let's continue. If you are doing that, let's continue. If there's a place you can... Work on it. You can do some improvement. Let's do it. Amen? Amen? Folks, that's the only way we're going to change the world. The world's going to have to see something different. The world's going to have to want something different. Amen? If we keep giving the world what everybody else is giving them, and what the world's giving us, if we keep giving that back, it's never going to change. It's going to be the same cycle. 
Amen? Right? When we just a few days ago, we was walking around here, it was 80 degrees. Right? But something changed, didn't it? A pattern changed. We need to make sure our pattern is going to change. Amen? Just remember, the Lord loves everybody. Even the people that, that we don't necessarily get along with. Even the people that don't like us. He still loves those people. Amen? Amen? And I didn't say you had to go be friends with everybody. I just said treat everybody right. Amen? And that was free. Let's have a word of prayer and we're going to, go, we're going to be at John chapter 14 this morning. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again for coming into your house. Lord, I just thank you for your word. Lord, it never quits. It never fails. It never gives up. Lord, I thank you for these that are here. Lord, those that are watching through that camera. Lord, I thank you for anointing every heart this morning with your word. And I thank you for it right now. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Verse number one. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Right. right? The Lord said, I got a mansion set up for you in heaven. Amen. Amen? I'm not knocking anybody, don't take this the wrong way, but I hear everybody talking about all I want is a creek, uh, is a cabin right on the creek bank, right on the outskirts of heaven. I guess that's better than nothing. But man, if I'm going to heaven, I want to go all the way. Amen. Amen. Amen? You know, that's like starting a football season out, going 10 and 0, and then losing the last three games. Well, we just about made it. There's no fun in that, is it? I mean, when I start, I want to go all the way. Amen. His name is Jesus. I want to spend time with him. I want to be able to look him eyeball to eyeball every day. Amen. Amen. So just, and once again, I'm not knocking anybody. A shack by the creek bank, it won't do me. I want the very best the Lord's got for me. I want the best He's got for me today, and I want the best He's got for me then. How about you? Right? There's only one way we're going to have His best, folks. We're going to have to go at it. We're going to have to go at it. Boo, the Lord's best is not going to just fall on you. You know how I know? Because I done tried. His best won't just fall on you. You've got to go after His best. Amen? Amen? I'll be the first one to tell you, I can do better. Is anybody else in here this morning, you say, I can do better? Right? You know what, you know what that's telling us? We're all in this together. Nobody, nobody's ahead of the race. We're all running together. Amen? Right? So, uh, verse number 3, he said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He didn't say that you would be there. You know that notion, everybody's going to heaven? He didn't say that. If everybody was going to heaven, he'd say that where I am, there you will be. No, he said, you may be. Right? right? He's saying, that's up to you. I'm giving you a choice. That where I am, you, you can choose to be there. Or you cannot. I have people tell me the Lord wouldn't send anybody to hell. I'm here to tell you today the Lord ain't sending a soul. Not a soul that way. Amen? He said, I give you a choice today. You choose what you want. Amen? Think about that for a minute. When the Lord created the world and everybody, He could have created all of us to love Him, to serve Him, to be perfect. He could have done that, but He didn't do that. Amen? He didn't do that. He wants us to love Him and serve Him because we want to, because it's in our heart. Amen? Right? I mean, I wouldn't want my wife to come home to me every night because somebody had a gun pointed to her head and going to shoot her if she didn't. Right? Do you want anything that's going to be forced? I mean, what kind of love is that? 
You, you understand what I'm saying? That's why the Lord give us, give us that opportunity to say, I love you and I want to be with you. Right? Not that you, you are mine and you're going to serve me. What kind of life would that be? If we never had any choices, if we never had any decisions to make, we just got up and done every day what we was told. Amen? Think about it for a minute. What would that be like? We got a representation of it here on this earth. What would that be like? That'd be like prison. Amen? Amen? That'd be like bondage. You get up and you eat when I tell you to. You go to the bathroom when I tell you to. You take a shower when I tell you to. You go to sleep when I tell you to. You get up when I tell you to. Right? The Lord don't want that. There's no love there. There is no love there. Amen? The love comes in when you have a choice to make. Right? You know, I, I like deer hunting, and it was 26 degrees this morning. The deer was probably moving to get warm. You know what? I, had, I got a choice. I can go hunting this morning, or I can go to church. Right? Amen? Everybody has that same choice. I'm not knocking people for the choices you make. That's up to you. That's your wagon. I'm talking about me. Amen? Right? But you see what I'm saying? What, what we do determines what we believe. Don't matter what we say. Don't matter what you say. Amen? I've seen people tell their wives or girlfriends they, they love them and the next minute they, they're cussing them out and they're pushing them around. That's love, ain't it? Nope. Sorry. That ain't love. We won't get off on that wagon. I think a man that pushes a woman around and hits is worse than dirt, but we won't get in that. Verse number 5. said, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right? We keep hearing other ways, but... Jesus says it right here in red letter. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right? Jesus said, I am the only way. There is no other way. Right? You can't pay enough tithe and offering. You can't show up at church enough. Right? Amen? Folks, for years I tried to earn salvation. I was at church when the doors was open. I was trying to do right. Anybody in here you ever tried to do right? I'm not talking about with the Lord's help. I'm talking about on your own. You tried to do right. Well, how'd that work out for you? I'm going to tell you how it worked out for me. I got in a mess. Amen? I got in a mess. Right? Because see, my, my goodness, I was looking at how bad somebody else was. Well, at least I'm not that bad. Right? You know, I hadn't killed anybody. Right? Amen? I, I hadn't done this, or I hadn't done that. So I'm all right. No. According to Jesus, I was just like they was. Right? He said, what sin is the greatest sin? Which one is it? All sin separates us from Jesus. So which one's the greater one? The lie? Murder? Sin is sin. And it don't matter which one. Amen? Right? But I kept showing up at church trying, trying to get myself good enough. Right? And I'm sure the preacher wasn't preaching that. But that's what I was hearing. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't good enough. Have you ever felt like I ain't good enough? Amen? I hope as much as you know the Lord today, you don't feel that way. Don't feel that way today. Amen? Don't say, I'm not good enough today. Today you are born again, recreated creature in Christ Jesus. Amen? You are worthy this morning. Amen? Amen? But I can't make you be worthy. You've got to see that for yourself. Amen? Amen? Most people don't know how much 
they are worth. Right? And their life proves it by the way they do, by the way they lived, by the way they take care of themselves, by the way they act. Right? Amen? Folks, the Lord said we were kings and priests in the earth. Me and you. Kings and priests in the earth. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means we ought to be living a good life. Amen? Well, what's a good life? Having a T-bone steak three nights a week? Having four brand new automobiles and two houses to live in? How about being born again on your way to heaven? And happy. And happy, amen? Right? See, all these people with stuff, and they're not happy. They are for a little while, and then they're not happy with that anymore. And then what? Got to have something else. Right? Got to have something else. And then you get to the point where you've got all you can think of or either you can't get to that next step. And what happens? Well, most folks wind up committing suicide. Right? Amen? You know why? There's, There's no joy there. There's no peace there. There's no happiness. There's no purpose. Right? Folks, the Lord has given all of us purpose. And that's what He wants us to see this morning. Right? That we have purpose in this life. And it's not to go after stuff. Right? Once again, I'm not against stuff. I'm not talking about stuff. But the Lord said our purpose in life is not stuff. Amen? How many times has He said, You take care of my business and I'll take care of your business? I mean, you come after me and I'll give you the stuff. Amen? Right? Amen? I know stuff feels good. Right? When you're sitting at home and your electricity is cut off and you want electricity, when it comes on, it feels good. Amen? Right? But at the same time, is that going to change your life? Look at the people before us that live without electricity. Hello? Look at the people that survived before us without cell phones. Wow, can you imagine not being able to get in touch with somebody today? Amen? Right? Can you imagine living without... The internet today. Amen. You know what? I survived the internet as a child without the internet as a child. Amen. Trey, do you believe that? I had a childhood. Listen to me. I had a childhood without the internet. And it was great, amen. amen. Right? I had a life without cell phones and every every move that I made being documented. You know what? It was great. Right? I can tell you about what I've done. You can't go back and look and see. Amen? It's not posted for the whole world to see. Right? All of this stuff changes society. All of this stuff changes who we are. Right? As one man said, hard times build strong men. Right? Easy times be a weak man. Right? Can anybody guess where we at? Well, we, 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 we weak right now. We, we got it easy right now. But you know what? Looks like hard times is coming back around. Amen? But you know what? His name is Jesus. And if you know who He is, it don't matter what comes around. He's going to take care of you. Amen? Amen? I'm just, I'm just trying to stir up some memories in you this morning. That all of this stuff, we don't have to have all this stuff. Right? I mean, wouldn't it, wouldn't it so much easier when you got up in the morning and the hardest thing you had to look for was your car keys? 
Right? You didn't have to look at you didn't have to look for your tablet. You didn't have to look for your cell phone. You didn't have to look for your iWatch. You didn't have to look for your, your headphones. Amen. You remember those days? You know what? My daddy remembers the days he didn't have to even look for a remote control for the TV. You know why? Because I was it. All he had to do was holler. Put that on the Braves. Amen. Let's watch the Falcons. Amen? Let's watch Ironside. Let's watch Bonanza, Gunsmoke. Yeah. You remember those shows? Show. How many cuss words did you hear in them? None. How many naked women did you see in them? None. How many scenes did you even see where the man put his tongue in the woman's mouth? When they kissed, they kissed on the cheek. None. Folks, this world is training us. And it's doing it one step at a time. That's right. right? When you go, if you'll stop today and you'll go back and you'll look to when you was a kid and look at what's on TV today and think, now would that be on TV? You look at what we put up with today and you look and you say, would my mom and daddy put up with that? You hear folks talking to their mom and daddy today, kids, and you think, what would happen if I'd have done that? Amen? Folks, most of our generation wouldn't be alive today if we'd done that. Can I get an amen? amen? Right? Did that make you hate your mom and daddy? It didn't make me either. You know what it made me do? It made me respect them. It made me know when they said something, guess what? They mean it. They mean it. Amen? Today, words are nothing. People say things and they mean absolutely nothing. That's right. Amen? They mean nothing. That's why it's so important we get back to this. Yeah. We get back to this book. We get back to this truth. Right? Because living in the world, once again... Every day we get busy, we get caught up, and we, we look around, and, and we seem to be doing okay. You know, looking at everybody else, we seem to be doing okay. But I got one question for you. Where in this book did the Lord say that we compare ourselves to everybody else? Where in this book did it say that? Where did it say anywhere in this book that your neighbor is your example? Where did it say it? You know what it does say? Jesus said, I am your example. That's right. right? Amen? So us comparing ourselves to everybody else is, is not right. It's not what the Lord's looking for. That's right. Amen? He said, compare yourself to this word. Compare yourself to what I said. Amen? That's right. right? Folks, you want to have joy in your life again? You want to have purpose in your life again? You want to get rid of all this fear that's going on? Get in this Word. Get in this Word. Amen? You know what happens to fear when faith comes? Fear goes away. Fear goes away. Faith, fear can't hang around where faith is at. It just can't do it. Amen? I walked in a hospital room and seen my uncle laying there. Everybody was talking death. This man is going to die. He can't live. Amen? You may as well go ahead and say bye. He's been without oxygen too long. He cannot live. Amen? Fear. I'm not somebody. But the Lord rose up in me and said, tell him he's going to be all right. He's going home. I'm going to raise him up. He's not going to die. And I told him he's not going to die. And oh Lord, you would have thought I'd committed a crime. Folks got mad at me. The doctor got mad at me. Amen. I'm just telling you signs. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. Amen. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. 
right? Amen? Folks, we can go with the flow if we want to, but there is something different out there. That's right. Amen? Right? You know the story, the doctor got mad, he quit, they sent another doctor down there. Right? And he said, look, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. This don't look good. I said, I'm going to be honest with you. You do the very best that you can. And you let the Lord take care of the rest of it. But, but you do the best you can. Amen? Something different. You know what? The same power that raised him up was the power that would have raised everybody in that hospital up. If they'd have grabbed hold of it. It was faith. Amen? See, everybody was in fear. You know what happened? After they started doing different things for him, trying different things, he started getting better. Right? You know what the Word done? It took fear and moved it away and it brought faith. Amen? You know what? Just a few hours, everybody seen he was doing so much better. They quit talking about dying. And they started talking about living. Right? They started talking about going on a trip. They started talking about going to Florida. Started, started making plans. Amen? You know why you do that? Because fear's not there anymore. Fear's been pushed to the side. Amen? Right? Faith has finally overrode the room. Amen? You want your life to change? You want your household to change? Faith. Let faith overfill the room. Amen? Amen? I've been going through some things. I've been having some tough times. Amen? But I got family members. I got friends. They, they keep calling me. They keep texting me. They keep encouraging me. That's right. right? Amen? That's what I need. Oh, yeah. Amen? That's what I need. That's what keeps me going. Amen. Right? That's what's going to keep you going, folks. We got to stay in faith. We got to stay positive about this. That's right. Amen? Amen? Wonder what kind of shape I'd be in if everybody, if everybody was calling and texting me and saying, you know, it's bad. It's bad. You know, I sure do hate it for you. And I hope one day it'd be, it'd be all right. Wonder how I'd be today. Wonder how you'd be today. Got to have somebody pushing you, don't you? You got to have that truth coming in. Amen. You got to have people speaking that word. Right? Amen? In order to be an overcomer, you've got to have the equipment to overcome. Right. right? And the equipment to overcome starts with His Word. Right? But it don't just stop there. This Word's got to be important. This Word has got to turn into a relationship. Amen? Remember me telling you about my wife? Right? I, I lived in Manchester and she lived in Cleveland. But you know what? It didn't matter what time I got off from work. Miss Tammy, it didn't matter how tired I was. I was going to Cleveland Spring. Amen. What's the saying? Come heck of high water. Yeah. It didn't matter, folks. Amen. The apple of my eye was in Cleveland Spring. They were nothing going to keep me. How about you? Amen. Is Jesus the apple of your eye today? Is there anything that's going to stand in the way of that? Amen? I'm, I'm not pointing fingers this morning. If anybody's got stuff in the way, i got stuff in the way. Amen? But I'm working on it. I'm dealing with it. I've made a decision. I'm dealing with it. Amen? I'm going to change where I'm at. I'm going to change my circumstances. Amen? But there's only one way that's going to happen. Relationship. That's only, only one way it's going to happen for you, and that's going to be relationship. Amen? That's right. Amen? I love you this morning. I appreciate you being here. I hope you got something out of it. Once again, don't take this the wrong way. There's nothing wrong with stuff. There's absolutely, listen to me, there's absolutely, positively, nothing wrong with you having stuff. Right. Amen? The problem comes in when stuff has you. That's right. 
Amen? When you can't live without the stuff, now we have a problem. Amen? And most of the world today can't live without the stuff. Right? I love you. Thank you for being here. Always an honor and a privilege to look up and see your smiling faces. Always. Amen? 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 As, as a pastor I used to have once said, if you, don't want to, if, you don't want, if you don't want me to know I'm talking about you, just smile at me and I'll think it's the person behind you. Amen? I think you're doing good. Right? So everybody said in church, every time you look around, everybody was smiling. Amen? They, they didn't want to be the guilty one. Right? The truth is this morning, every one of us is guilty. And it starts with me. Amen? Amen? Once again, I love you. Thank you for being here. You know what? Merry Christmas to you. Everybody saying happy holidays. But I say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen. Let's have a closing prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this opportunity of coming into your house. Lord, I just thank you for each and every one that's here. Lord, for those that was watching through that camera. Lord, I thank you for stirring every heart, every mind this morning. Lord, I just thank you right now for letting each and every one of us know just how much you truly do love us. And Lord, I thank you for it right now. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning. God bless America. Amen. Amen. Thank you.